Hey guys, this is Coach Thurman at uh, Plainville High School in Plainville, Louisiana. Um, had a guy that they asked me about uh, some shotgun wing tee stuff that I did probably back about seven years ago, uh, and explaining it to him, I probably thought I thought maybe some other guys maybe uh, would probably like to maybe get some insight on some of the things we did, uh, where it came from, kind of the uh, evolution of what we did. Um, like I told him, I said you know probably about 2007 or so um, <clears throat> happened upon a video by. Uh, Pat Murphy up at uh, Capitol High School in Montana on his shotgun wing tee and uh, I had kind of uh, uh, looked at a few other uh, types or you know uh, systems of shotgun wing tee people were running Lou Johnson and things like that but uh, Pat Murphy's kind of uh, intrigued me a little more it kind of gave me everything I wanted in the system so we kind of installed a little bit of those things in our offense and um, you know just kind of uh, you know ever since then every once in a while we'll you know just different seasons we'll add a few things here and there and run a few things um, so I want to talk to you today about that, about how we adapted some of the things that we did, uh, some of the things how we, we ran some of his actual concepts and kind of added some of our own as we went along. Uh, first off, I want to just kind of show you, this, this is what we run today. This is our uh, three by one package. Uh, we're probably in this about 99% of the time. Uh, uh, going into this year, got a pretty good quarterback, a couple of good receivers. Um, and just want to show you, this is, this is our defensive adjustment. We're, we're a 4-2-5 team, uh, cover three. Uh, this is our adjustment versus trips. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna walk our weak side safety out. Uh, we'll press him into the backside corner. Who's playing uh, deep half? We're playing quarter quarter halves. Um, so needless to say, this this is a big adjustment for us. Okay, this is something we have to we have to rep early on uh, through the spring and into the, uh, the summer and seven on seven because it really um, alters our base defense. Okay, and that's to me that's why trips is such a um, a great weapon for an offensive coach because uh, it really forces a defense to either a um, make big adjustments or they're going to give up something. Okay, you can't. You know, most of the time you can't set back in your in your base alignment and be able to account for what a trips team is trying to do to you. Um, and as far as what we do as an offense, first thing we want to try to establish, we want to make sure that they put at least three people over our trips receiver, the trip side receiver. Um, even even this particular uh, coverage scheme here, the quarter quarter halves, we still feel like we have an advantage just simply because of the three defenders they have over our trips, only two um, are up in a, in a or sorry, only one is up in a press uh, uh, alignment. The other two are kind of off, so we feel like we can run our screen game out there, uh, put those two deep guys on an island, make them tackle, and still feel like we can gain a couple of yards here and there when we need to, but. We want to be able to do that, run our three-man concepts, be able to run our screen game to force those guys to account for those three receivers by placing at least three over. We don't want, uh, we feel like if they're trying to cheat a guy inside, maybe trying to split the difference with a backer between number three in the box, we feel like we have an advantage there. Uh, the next thing we want to kind of look at, um, we want to make those guys play um, uh, some kind of a combo coverage on our backside uh, receiver because that's, that's pretty much our, our stud. That's our best guy. Um, we feel like uh, either they're going to give a single coverage, and they probably will a lot of times starting off to try to keep an extra guy in the box. But we feel like they're either going to try to bracket him or play a high-low on him um, once once we start hitting him, and, and that's kind of what we want to make them do. You know, we want to make them commit at least five people in the coverage. You know, like I said, three over our trip side receivers and at least two people accounted for on the backside against our stud receiver. And what that basically does is it allows us to get a six-man box against um, – against our offense to where we feel like we can get, as long as our quarterback is able, we have a guy, you know, uh, have a guy in the game that we feel like can either be a threat to run the football or maybe a read threat, something like that. We feel like we have the numbers advantage. We got five linemen and a running back and a quarterback against their six guys. We should always have that one plus advantage on offense. And that's kind of what we do. And the reason I'm showing you this is because as we move forward talking about the shotgun wing tee, um, you know, and you'll see in a, a couple of video clips here in a little bit. I'm going to show you of Coach Murphy. Um, he does go empty. What, what, I'm, what I personally have adapted, what we did to um, out of the shotgun wing tee, uh, we did we did put the halfback or the third receiver in the in the trips back in the backfield, but he's still an immediate uh, out receiver. We, we can get him out in the pass in a route, a flat route, or a swing route. Um, but in terms of what, what we're adapting to. Um, this is kind of, you know, from here we can, this is kind of like what Pat Murphy does. If he, he has number one on the line, number two off, um, this is kind of his base alignment when he ran in his shotgun wing tee. 
we will actually stick a number three kind of a wing right here which will allow us to, to work a lot of our trip side stuff um, give you three immediate receivers we will force them to play three over um, so therefore when I talk about the advantages that trips give you trips gives you you still maintain those advantages when you're running out of this formation um, so you account for all that and you make the defense account for these three receivers now it kind of puts them in a bind to this side over here okay um, <clears throat> I don't know you know what, what you know, everybody's background is on wing T I'm sure we've all faced wing T teams um, but when I hear wing T I, my, my, I immediately think buck sweet you know uh, uh, probably the first four or five years of my coaching career um, we were a wing T team uh, we were Delaware you know Delaware wing T 121 929 all that stuff there so when I hear wing T my mind immediately goes to the buck sweep series um, which is buck sweep trap and waggle um, that's a system based you know offensive attack you know you do this and until they try to stop it or they you know adjust somebody and they give up this and then you go back to the next play and um, you know, a lot of it depends on, you know, what these backers are doing. Are they, are they reading keys in the backfield? Are they reading their guards? What are the defensive ends doing? Is, is this guy widening out to stop the buck sweep? What, what are they doing? So it, it's a series-based offense. So to me, the shotgun wing T, especially, like I said, when they've adjusted, they have, they have to adjust to cover these three immediate receivers to this backside. Buck sweep is the play that we, we're going to try to run. I think that's anytime you, uh, it's definitely a lot of these videos that I'm about to show you here in a second, um, buck sweep is the staple play. Um, the thing you lose out of the shotgun that you would have out of a regular wing tee is that trap. Now, you can run trap. The only problem is on a normal blocking scheme, we're going to send, uh, in, in regular wing tee, we're going to send both the tackles to the next level as well as a play side guard to try to wall off these linebackers. And it hits so quick that this end really has no no uh, chance to make a play on the on the uh, ball carrier because the ball should be gone by then. In the shotgun, it's not going to be quite as fast. So therefore, I don't like to run trap out of the shotgun wing tee just simply because I feel like this end can fall into the play and make a, make a play pretty easily. Um, so you've got to have a, const a constraint play um, to make them stay at home and do what you want them to do. And... Um, from what I've gathered from uh, some of the things I've watched on uh, Coach Murphy's offense, as well as some of the things we've done over the past uh, several times that we've ran this, we kind of add uh, the counter play, the weak side counter. Um, now, obviously, you could run a quarterback counter or you could run um, what they run, counter crisscross. And we'll show that here in a little bit. They call it uh, crisscross reverse, but I've always called it counter crisscross. Even when we ran the, the regular wing tee back uh, years ago, we called it counter crisscross. So just to outline the buck sweep play and you know what what everybody does right here um this guy can go in a, in, in a two-step motion just a quick motion to get him going he's going to receive the ball on the inside handoff uh right here right in front of the quarterback and he's going to run about to probably about c gap his eyes must be on this play side guard all right this guard is going to pull get a little depth run kind of a j block here and look to kick out force okay this guy's got to keep his eye on the front side guard as well as the backside guard. Backside guard is going to pull, get a little depth right here, and as he's coming around, he needs to train his eyes to look to seal off the first backer that is trying to scrape to the alley right here. Um, depending on you know how they align, this this uh, wing and tight end may end up picking up one of the backers, but he's looking to seal the next clear backer that comes through off. This play side or the halfback that's getting the football, he's going to. Uh, it's probably a little bit shallow on him right there. Um, he is going to run with his eyes on those backers and, with, and those uh, guards, rather. And when they split, he is going to do what's called a square cut, and he's going to get vertical up the field right there and try to run between their blocks, between the kick out and the seal block right here. Um, play side wing is going to, you know, basic, basic uh, rules are going to be gap down backer. A lot of times we just tell the tight end and the wing, we're going to, we're going to double and chip off that end to the backer. Um, Tackle is going to check block, block back side down. Uh, gap down backer is really going to be his rule, but he's checking for that pulling guard. Uh, depending on how you look at it, Pat Murphy, I know he does send his, uh, he'll send his center play side, but I, I like to steal old school wing tee, check back, you know, man on, man, man back to uh, check for that pulling guard. Um, here's where some people vary. Uh, sometimes they'll keep this, this backside tackle in to block the end. Um, I've actually uh, had a situation where we've scored a touchdown before um, off this what we call a touchdown block 
we sent this guy to go to the third level pretty much. He's coming to try to kick out any kind of secondary force that may try to feel right here. And like I said, I've, I've seen it on film in our own game where this guy made a block right here that, that sprung us for a touchdown. So I, I'm very, very uh, particular in the fact that we're always going to tell our backside tackle to run that touchdown block to try to get out and kick out the corner of the safety uh, so that back can cut off that block and try to make a touchdown. Um, what, what really um, – lends itself here with this backside spread concept right here, spread alignment rather, is what they do when they get up and they read it. Uh, they were pretty much running RPOs before RPOs were uh, being ran, so to speak, because uh, he'll get up here and he'll peek the alignment. If he's got it, um, he'll he'll flash fake to this back right here and he'll throw the bubble backside, especially if these guys are way off. And I'll show you a video of that here in just a second. Um, so that's basically their buck sweep play, okay? Um, I'll show you some video here in a minute where they actually get um, into an empty set and they'll widen this guy out. Uh, like I said, a lot of times they, they'll run it with the guy in the backfield right here, but we'll put the guy at kind of a wing or we'll go an empty, true empty and get him out of the box completely. Uh, but they'll have the guy at a halfback, let him come on across. Um, or you can come from a wing or you can, like I said, can be a receiver out here and they'll run it out of empty. And this quarterback right here who in the film is a guy that sometimes will play this slot right here. They'll put him at quarterback and let just run quarterback buck sweep. He'll peek over here at the three-man uh, bubble right here, and if they've got numbers, they'll throw it. If not, he'll just jab, step, and go. Uh, really effective play because, like I said, you know, the bottom line is, you know, they've got to cover or at least, you know, align people over the trip side, um, and then they have to stay gap sound inside, and it really puts a lot of stress on whoever the force player is on that strong side because, um you know, if, he, if he's too tight, you can run jet outside of him. You can run play action. Um, if he's playing too loose, we can just kick him out and run right up the gap right here on Buck Sweep. So it's a really, really, uh, really solid play, in my opinion. Uh, let me illustrate the uh, counter crisscross for you real quick, which would be the third play in that series. I'll just run it here from their, uh, their normal alignment. So they'll hand the ball off right here, cross face to the quarterback. I mean, from the quarterback to the halfback. Uh, quarterback, once he hands the ball off, will continue out an outside path outside the defensive end to try to influence this guy or at least hold him a little bit to kind of help that kick out block. Um, once the halfback receives the, the handoff, he'll make a two-handed uh, handoff to the wingback now. So the wingback takes a jab. Sometimes maybe he doesn't need to take that jab step, get a little depth, and get that inside handoff and run the counter path right here. Um, a little different than your normal you know, GT counter, things like that. Um, well, first off, first side we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna combo down to backside backer. Um, center is gonna check backside for the pulling guard. Here's a little bit different. They don't pull, uh, and, and we don't either. We we when we ran this, we didn't we didn't pull our tackle. Our tackle was kind of a slower guy. Plus, it felt like it was an easier block for this tackle to block this end than this tight end to try to get a scoop right here. So, play side guard would pull, kick out first man, pass the hole. And the backside tight end, who's you know be a pretty good athlete, is going to pull and actually lead up and hold and try to get a piece of this backer right here. Uh, over here, you can fake the bubble, whatever, try to hold this guy um, outside the box. Uh, really good play. Uh, like I said, I'll illustrate that for you here in a little bit on some plays um, on YouTube. So that's the counter crisscross, which I said kind of basically takes the uh, place of the trap in terms of a constraint play to keep those linebackers from just flying out. Um, now the third play we're going to talk about real quick, third play in the series, is going to be the waggle. Okay, uh, The waggle, when you normally run it, has the fullback in the flats. He's usually going to be the guy, once that quarterback turns his head, any kind of pressure, that's his kind of relief valve. He's going to kind of throw it to him. Well, there's not a fullback here. Okay, So there's nobody to you know, come out of the backfield into the flats. So we're going to let the slot right here kind of run the flat route. And what we do is we have what we call our, our zip route. We'll take a hard, uh, hard release inside two or three steps, and then break it back outside to the flats. Uh, this guy here is going to have a crack flag. Uh, backside tight end is going to run a drag route, going to climb to probably about 13, 12, 10 to 13 yards, work across, and this backside wing is going to do a climb route and try to split the safeties right here. Halfback is going to fake across right here. Quarterback is going to fake, get depth, reverse out, pivot, and roll around, try to get depth and work itself downhill to his target. Once our quarterback breaks contained, and a lot of times if you, if you talk to old school wing T coaches, you know, when they talk about waggle, uh, they describe waggle as a run, is actually a run play for the quarterback. Uh, so once he breaks contained, gets his head around and starts heading downfield, if, if the coverage is off, you know, if it's anything close, you know, under five yards, run the football. 
and we tell them, you know, give them free reign to run the football. You know, obviously if it's third and like eight or something like that, you want to kind of look to throw the football. But um, our reprogression here, we teach them to throw deep uh, to shallow. So we'll look for the, you know, for the crack flag or the post corner if you want to run that or the go route first. And then he'll check down to the uh, drag route and into the flats. And like we talked about earlier, if he has any pressure, immediately we'll look try to hit this guy in the flats. By the time he breaks contain, that guy should be breaking back out to the flat. Uh, pass blocking wise, uh, blocking scheme, we're going to seal down with our tackle. Uh, first couple steps will look like he's running the touchdown block on the on the uh, buck sweep. Uh, uh, backside guard or play side guard, depending on how you uh, look at it, is going to um, he's going to log this in right here, get some depth. Work his hips around and log that in. Um, center is going to check backside for pulling guard. This backside guard is going to get depth, work around. Any kind of force player comes out, he'll kick that guy out. Um, if not, then he's just going to also log or seal back inside for anybody that may be trying to leak through. Uh, backside tackle is going to just kind of take a uh, uh, large step inside and just basically set back and seal this end right here and that's the waggle play like i said that, that, that produces a three play series uh just a very basic um series feed to run and the shotgun buck sweep uh the buck sweep with the backside bubble is a very good play with an rpo built in you have your counter counter crisscross you can run quarterback counter if you want you don't have to do the double handoff you can just run straight quarterback counter if you want to um and then you have your waggle play or you know your bootleg depending on how you call it um a couple other things that we do um, that I did not get from um, Coach Murphy. We're, we're a heavy sprint out team. Okay, over the last um, several several years, no matter what we're doing offensively, uh, we feel like we need to uh, get our quarterback out of the pocket and, and sprint out and throw the ball. And what one of the most uh, effective routes we've had doing that would be the comeback by the outside receiver. Number one, um, we'll push the guy deep to about look like a fade to about a depth of probably. Uh, depending on the quarterback's arm, sometimes we go 15 back to 13, but a lot of times we're 13 back to 10. Um, you know, last step inside uh, inside foot, last step at 13 yards, that receiver's going to drop his leverage a little bit, get lower center of gravity, plant that out that inside foot, and work yourself back to the sideline. We want to throw the ball right in here, let him run into it. Um, really good timing uh, route. You know, you got to practice a lot, but it's like I said, it's, it's been very, very good to us. Uh, about two years ago, we had a quarterback that's, that was not very good in general as, as a quarterback. And we had a, a stud receiver who's actually playing defensive back at Texas A&M right now. Um, and the quarterback's arm was not very good at all. Um, and this kid still caught 60-something passes, probably at least 30 of which were on the comeback on the sprint out. Um, several things you can do with number two receiver right here. Uh, right now, we pretty much have this guy running about a 13-yard curl route. He'll curl inside and find grass either inside or outside. Um, you can also run them on a post corner, um, some things we've done in the past, or just a straight corner. Um, or you can run them on some kind of an underneath route to kind of pull the coverage down. Um, this back here is going to help set the edge. Uh, everybody on the offensive line is going to uh, reach block. Quarterback's going to get depth. And that's one thing that we really have, have preached to our quarterbacks. Uh, for a lineup at a depth of five yards, we want to push back and, and retreat to a depth of at least seven yards. We want to work ourselves around and downhill towards our target. Um, for the longest time, uh, some of our younger guys tended to try to sprint out and you know continue their weight and their uh, momentum towards the sideline and trying to throw the ball downfield. Uh, we end up getting balls selling um, to the ground or you know way off target. So that's one thing we work on. Um, not not as much as we probably should, but we, we're definitely going to uh, try to put in as much work as we can with our young quarterbacks and getting their a trajectory of their body and their arm and the ball downhill towards their target. Uh, these backside guys, we just teach them rule-wise just to, um, you know, it varies what we want to do. We'll teach those guys to kind of work their self across the field, try to get in the line of sight of the quarterback in case uh, his primary re uh, reads are not open. And that's that's our sprint out game. We can, you know, just call those either Robert or Linda, depending on which way we're sprinting out. Uh, but we love throwing the comeback. There's a lot of things you can do, obviously, but this one's been good to us over the years. Like I said, especially if they start trying to take away this buck sweep right here, uh, they really open themselves up to being able to sprint back to that weak side. So that's one thing we do out of this uh, when we've done it in the past um, to try to take advantage of a defense over adjusting for the buck sweep. Um, another thing that's, that's really good, and there's a video, I'll, I'll at least show you the YouTube channel here in a second that you can kind of go look at it a little bit on your own. Um, 
you know, the belly or the, the lead play blast, some people call it. Um, just a very simple illustration. Uh, we're either going to base block this or we're going to cross block it, just depending on the defensive line office. If we get a three tech to this weak side, then we'll cross block it. But uh, one way or the other, we're running the ball through the A gap, I mean the B gap right here, rather. Uh, halfback is going to blast through the hole. Quarterback is going to slide and uh, follow the back sleeve block through the hole. Backside, we're going to zone it, zone to the play. Uh, sorry about that. Just step and seal, step and seal, uh, step and seal right here. Maybe try to reach down. You know, it's basically backside. We're just going to step to and try to cut off. Uh, you can send this wing in motion if you want to, and he can become a pitch man. That, that'll hold anybody, uh, maybe the alley player or force player, from falling into the play. Uh, so you can bring this guy in motion, and you can actually run option if you want to. Um, now I have these guys block here, and uh, this guy falls inside. You know, you can maybe swing it out or whatever. Um, you can read the end if you want to. There's a lot of things you can do with this, but um, just the old belly, you know, play. Uh, wing T ran it for years, you know, 187 cross block, things like that, 983 cross block. Uh, really, really good play. Uh, kind of sets itself up, especially, like I said, if they're over rotating to take away, um, well, your buck sweep and trying to stop your sprint out. So now they're leaving a gap inside. This end's playing loose because he don't want to be reached on the sprint out, things like that. Really opens up that, that uh, lead block right there. Um, several things you can do out of it. Like I said, you can get your trips, run all your. Uh, you know, you can either run out of here and run all your, you know, your two-man uh, pass concepts, or you can get in trips, run your three-man pass concepts. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about real quick before we go to some videos is, uh, you know, you can run what's called, you know, you can you can call an overcall to bring this guy out. If you start getting the defense that they're running, uh, you know, four three or something like that, or any kind of cover two scheme where this corner now doubles up as your force man as well as your flat defender. Um, what that basically does now, it, it widens out the force player. So now, look, look you know, the, the, they're, they're not able to squeeze you down. You've uh, got them outflanked, and now the guard is basically, unless this guy scrapes, you know, he's just turning up on air right here, and you end up with a, uh, a really good play here against uh, a defense that doesn't have a solid force player right here. Um, and you'll see uh, just a second when I, when I go over to the uh, uh, Pat Murphy videos, they're actually in this formation, uh, may, maybe the first play. Um, but like I said, just, you know, illustration wise, that's what we've done in the past and some things you can add to it. Extremely good, um, uh, offensive formation to get into. It just really creates some natural voids in the defense, allows you to outflank the defense and cause them to actually, um, really have to work to even things up on you. Um, all right here, like I said, this is, um, I'm hoping this is going to show this video on this capture device, but this is, uh, Pat Murphy's offense back prox at 2007 or so. They're going to run buck sweep, and they're in an overset right here. Um, and they really, it really pops out right here. Guard kicks out right there. Guard leads up. He's got his hand on his back and just kind of follows him through until he um, gets clear and runs to the end zone. Uh, I'm trying to see if the backside tackle runs that touchdown block, and they do. You can see that guy coming. There's a great example. That's, that's an ex a great example, just like we had on that film. Without that guy, there's a good chance that – this might not have scored. That guy probably made the tackle or at least slowed him down to allow somebody else to make the tackle right there in the hole. Um, so that's buck sweep. Um, I don't know that we have any waggle um, uh, things to show you here, but I'm definitely going to show you the counter crisscross right here uh, from Coach uh, Murphy right here. This is the, they call, like I said, call it crisscross reverse. We call it uh, counter crisscross. You can call it whatever you want to call it, really. But um, you see here they do pull the guard and the tight end like we do. I don't remember if I got that from him or just my tackle couldn't go, but um, this is a really good play. It really gets the linebackers confused right here. Um, hand, double handoff right there. Quarterback kind of stays outside. Uh, really good play, kind of crisscross. Like I said, it kind of takes the place of that trap play that you would have in normal buck sweep series. Watch it one more time. I'm going to go back and show you the uh, – the bubble off the buck sweep. So it's just, just a really, really good play. Uh, real quick, let me go back and show you this real quick. It's the end of that buck sweep play we ran a second ago. Like I said, you go here to Mon Montana Football on YouTube, Shotgun Wing T, MCA Clinic. 
and see all of this. It's another buck sweep. And they're going to come back and run the bubble here again. And when they run it, I mean, the buck sweep, and they run the bubble here in a minute. You can see the defense is even lined up. They don't give them a chance to get set. They just they catch it and swing it out of the bubble, and the guy goes in for a touchdown. So like this, this is kind of RPO before RPOs were out there. So and They didn't have a chance. I mean, there was nobody out there. Had a two-on-one -on -one advantage. All right, and the last thing we'll show you real quick is, or one of the last things, rather, um, this is this is them running out of empty right here. Like I said, this this is kind of more what we do now. Uh, we don't really have a lot of a lot of times have the halfback in the backfield. Um, we just got a little tighter than they do. Um, just a second. So we run this. This guy here is a little tighter. We'll actually use him to run the ball. We can call an empty call and get this guy to widen out. What we've done in the past, but here they're just a <coughs> excuse me. You know, they're checking the back seat, backside bubble. They probably could throw it here, but if they got two guys kind of pressed up, it's probably not quite as ideal, whereas if two guys are off and just one guy was up, and they just run the quarterback uh, buck sweep right here. I said he got a big kid, good athlete like that. It's kind of like it's stealing at that point. Uh, I think they come back here in just a second, maybe run it one more time, and then they're going to show the, uh, the bubble out of empty a couple times. Like I said, definitely come back and you know get on YouTube and watch these guys. Go to this channel, watch all the things they do. I mean, there's so much room up there for the top. They're just not even really adjusting at all to it because they're so. Uh, concerned with those trips over there that they just give it, you know, that buck sweep side away. You can always run G if that end starts getting wide. I think there's all kinds of buck sweep, I mean, uh, wing T plays you can adapt to uh, out of this formation. Let me try to fast forward to where they run the, the bubble out of that. This could be it. Let me see. No, this is where they. But anyways, you know, not take up any more time on that. You know, it's just as easy to throw that two, three man bubble, just throw that two man bubble, depending on how they adjust and what they line up to. Um, here's another video I found of another team. This is a uh, Brandon Harris. Uh, this is from last year, so you can search that too and check it out. This is them running, uh, running Buck Sweet out of the Shotgun Wing T. So just uh, check out that channel. Here's a uh, end zone view of it. Force man showed late. He kind of went up there and dug him out. Um, the last thing I'll show you, this guy here is running that lead play, the belly play. Uh, this is Tom Brankin. has a really good side. I follow him a lot. Um, I haven't been on his YouTube channel uh, lately, but I go to CoachBranks.com a lot. Uh, just found this. This is him running the – the belly here, the lead with the half pad. It's got bubbles right here, and it kind of is used to keep that force guy kind of wide right here. They cross blocked it. It's a good run for your quarterback. I'd highly suggest, like I said, you check those those things out. Um, this is where I got this from. Um, you can see right here, shotgunwingt.com. It's got some good information on there. I got some plays illustrated on there. It's got some videos you can actually buy if you want to do that. I never bought the videos. I just kind of put it together myself. Um, but uh, it kind of got my wheels, you know, turning a little bit on this offense when I started looking at these videos and seeing things that uh, Coach Murphy did. And like I said, it's very good stuff. It allows you to take advantage of trips and, you know, the front side wing tee. Um, play around with it. See what you can come up with. If you got any questions, I'd love to kind of do some chalk talk with you and kind of help you work through some things and some things we've done and kind of help you out a little bit. Hope you enjoyed it. If you got any questions, please let me know. Thank you.